Here we're going to learn a new method of integration called partial fraction decomposition, which is quite a mouthful and it sounds really complicated, but it turns out, believe it or not, that it's not actually a new integration method. It's really an algebraic method that we can use to break something down to a form that we can integrate. So this goes kind of back to what we did with U substitution, where we didn't learn new integrals, we just learned techniques for taking complicated integrals and rewriting them in terms of simpler ones. This is kind of similar in theory. We're going to take a complicated function and this time we're going to use some algebra to break it down into simpler functions that we do know how to integrate. We might need to use a little bit of u substitution at that point, but we'll get to that when we need to. Partial fraction decomposition applies to a very specific class of functions. It applies to rational functions, like the one we have here, 1 over x cubed plus 2x squared plus x. And specifically, I make a note here that the order of the numerator is going to be less than the order of the denominator. That's not something you need to worry about a lot. All of the examples you're going to see in class and on the homework, that will be true. Um, but partial fraction decomposition really only applies to those. If the order of the denominator is higher, like if you had something like x cubed plus x squared over x squared plus x, in that case you would need to first do long division, polynomial long division, and then do partial fraction decomposition on the result. We're not going to deal with that because that's a little bit more complicated than we want to get for this example. So all the examples we'll do, this order of the numerator will be less than the order of the denominator. So this method will apply. Now how do we do this? It turns out that this complicated rational function can be written in terms of simpler ones. So it turns out that 1 over x cubed plus 2x squared plus x can be broken down or decomposed into what we would call partial fractions. In other words, it can be decomposed into simpler rational functions. It turns out that it's equal to 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 over the quantity x plus 1 squared. Now, if we could figure that out, if we could get from here to this partial fraction version, it turns out we can integrate those. If we try to integrate each of these pieces, we know how to do each of those. Some of them require a quick u substitution, but 1 over x is simply the natural log of x. 1 over x plus 1 needs a quick u substitution, but if you look back at your notes there, you should be able to do this one without really doing much work. That's the natural log of x plus 1. So that requires a quick u sub. We won't take the time to do it here. You would let u equal x plus 1 and go from there. Part of what we did back when we did u sub was getting used to doing that sort of quick substitution without the whole process, but just being able to write down the answer very quickly. Similarly, the other one will also use u substitution. This one is not one of the natural log forms, but in the same way, we can think about how u substitution would be applied there by again letting u equal x plus 1, then you would have 1 over u squared, and you could go from there. So I don't want to spend a lot of time going over this integration step. When we do full examples, we might spend a little more time going through that. But notice that each of these pieces, while they require u substitution, the u substitution is pretty quick and easy. So if we could decompose it like this, then we could integrate without too much trouble. Now, before we do anything else, let's verify that this is true. Because if this is true, then we can integrate this complicated function by integrating three simpler functions. The goal of the day is going to be figuring out how do we actually get from here to here? How do we actually decompose it? And that's the process we're going to go through with partial fraction decomposition. But before we do that, we're going to first verify that this is true. And the reason we're going to do this is that some of the algebra we do along the way will be helpful when we want to reverse the process. So first we're going to verify that this sum of partial fractions 
is in fact equal to this big complicated rational function. The way we would do this is we would combine these and to do so we need a common denominator. That's the step that's important to recognize because later on when we go to decompose we'll use what we learn here with the common denominator. So keep that in mind for later. But for now we're doing somewhat familiar algebra of getting a common denominator. Notice here the denominators are x, x plus 1, and x plus 1 squared. So the pieces we need in our common denominator are x plus 1, x, and then we're going to need a second x plus 1 to account for this one. So our common denominator, the least common denominator in this case, would be x times x plus 1 squared. That's the common denominator we need, and that accounts for all these pieces. So it has an x in it, it has an x plus 1, and it has an extra one for the last one. In order to get that common denominator, we need to multiply the first fraction by x plus 1 squared on both the numerator and denominator. On the second fraction, we just need to multiply by x and x plus 1. And on the last fraction, we just need to multiply by x. After we do that, we have x plus 1 squared, and then x times x plus 1 here, and lastly x on the last fraction. So all of them have the common denominator and the numerators as shown. Once they have common denominators, we can combine them all. And as we do so, we'll expand out by multiplying x plus 1 squared and distributing the x here. So x plus 1 squared is x squared plus 2x plus 1. x times x plus 1 is x squared plus x. And since we're subtracting, we'll distribute that minus sign as well. Minus x squared minus x and then minus x again for the last fraction. And all of that divided by x over x plus 1 squared. Now when you do this, notice that the x squareds cancel each other, and then the 2x cancels with these two minus x terms. So all that's left in the numerator is 1 over x times x plus 1 squared. And if you expand out x times x plus 1 squared, you'll notice that you get exactly x cubed plus 2x squared plus x. So that's all well and good. We can verify that those are equal. We can take these individual smaller fractions, these small rational functions, and we can combine them into this more complicated rational function. So we can move in that direction. The trickier part is taking the complicated one and breaking it down into the simpler ones. But that's what we want in order to do these integrals. That's the process we need to know how to do. So that's the unfamiliar one. That's where we need partial fraction decomposition. And that's what we're going to talk about as we go forward here. So keep this in mind. This process of combining them involved finding a common denominator and then merging things together. So when we start breaking them apart, we'll first take that common denominator and split it up, and that'll give us an idea of what our partial fractions will be. So we'll come back to that in another video and talk about how to start this process of decomposing a rational function. But once we do, the integration step is relatively quick and easy, especially if you're familiar enough and comfortable enough with u substitution that you can skip through showing all that work and you can jump straight to the answer with those short u substitution problems. So the process is going to be doing the algebra to break a rational function down into these partial fractions. And once we do, we can write a quick integration step to find the answer for the integral. So most of the problem is just algebra, and it's a new algebraic technique that you probably haven't seen before. 
And that's why we're going to take time to go through and find how this decomposition works. But our process is mostly this step here, finding what the smaller fractions look like that would combine to make this more complicated rational function.